We got a lot of definition to cover and then we'll have our practice problems. Okay, but basically today, uh, we're gonna be using the characteristics of the first derivative to sketch a function. So the first derivative can give us something called critical numbers or partition numbers. And then we'll make a sign chart. We'll test them on the sign. We'll test the critical numbers on the sign chart. We'll find maximums, we'll find minimums, and we'll use all that information and Desmos probably to help us graph the function. Okay, but like I said, first two pages are all definition and theorems. Okay, so theorem one, increasing and decreasing functions. Uh, number one, if the first derivative is positive on some interval a, b, this means that the original function will increase from left to right. So this makes sense because the derivative is the slope. So if the derivative is positive, this means that the slope is positive, and that means that the slope of the original function will increase. And we can represent this by the chart below. So the first line, this says if the derivative is positive, the original function increases and the graph of the original function will rise. So examples of a graph that rises, well, it can go increase up and to the right. It can also increase on a curve and also increase that way on a curve. So that's what the end behavior of a graph would look like if you are an increasing function. OK. And then two, if the derivative is negative on the interval a, b, then the original function will decrease, will fall from left to right. And to represent that, we have the chart below. If the derivative is negative, the original function decreases and the graph will fall. So examples of a decreasing graph will be just flip all of these over. We'll go down and to the left, we'll curve down and curve down out and to the right. So those would be examples of decreasing. Okay. So those are the characteristics, our first characteristics of a what a derivative, a first derivative can give us. And it's stuff we know already. Again, if a derivative is positive or negative, remember that derivative is slope. So a positive slope increases, a negative slope decreases. Okay. And now with that being said, for increasing and decreasing, we can find max and minimums that way based on a graph. And they're called local extrema. So for number one, when the graph of a continuous function changes from rising to falling, a high point or a local maximum occurs. So that's going to be the first graph right here. So this graph goes from rising to falling. And whenever your graph rises and falls, you create a local high point that is considered a local maximum. <clears throat> and two, when the graph of a continuous function changes from falling to rising, a low point or a local minimum occurs. Okay, so that's the second graph. If our graph goes from falling to rising, then the point, the low point created is called the local minimum. Okay. And when we, <clears throat> to go, I guess, a little more in depth, a local min and a local max will also happen at our critical numbers. So again, we're going to get into more of this definition, but a critical number is an X value that we find from the first derivative. Again, we're going to cover that definition, but just wanted to touch on that. Okay. Three, the value f of c is called a local extremum if it is either a local maximum or a local minimum. So we're just putting more definition here. If the problem says find the local extremum, 
Well, that means you're just finding local maximums and local minimums. That's just the terminology. So a local extremum is a max or a minimum. And a local extremum is also considered a turning point. It means where the graph changes direction. Well, from the first graph, we see we do increase to decrease. That means we change direction. That means that at that local maximum, that would be considered a turning point. And then for the second graph, we see we go decrease to increase. So again, the graph changes direction. That local min would also be considered a turning point. OK. All right. So there's our first page of definition. Any questions so far? And it should all come together when we actually start working the problems. But I just want to chug through this definition right now. OK. The next definition, I've mentioned it already, is critical numbers. So a real number x in the domain of f such that the derivative will equal 0 or the derivative will not exist is called a critical number of f. So to find a critical number, we take the derivative and we set it equal to 0 and we solve for x. That's it. That's how you find critical numbers. Critical numbers are also considered partition numbers. The reason they're called partition numbers is because we're going to plot them on a number line, and it breaks up the number line. It puts partitions on the number line. OK. Uh, the partition numbers um, may not exist for the original function. We're not going to get anything crazy like that for uh, this class, but you may, you could get a critical number that doesn't fit in the domain of the original function. But don't think too much on that. We're not going to get any of those type of numbers. OK. And then at the critical number, a horizontal tangent will exist. OK. So what that means is that, you know, just draw a little graph real fast. So. Let's say I have a graph that looks like this. And then here's my critical number of C. At this critical value, what we're saying is that a horizontal tangent line will exist. So remember, tangent lines share a point with a function and take off. And this only makes sense because if you find a critical number, you set the derivative equal to 0. Well, the slope of all horizontal lines is 0. So it only makes sense that at critical numbers, you have a horizontal tangent line that has a slope of 0. That's all we're saying here. OK. And it's all from the definition. OK, so those are critical numbers. Keep it simple to find a critical number. You take the derivative, you set it equal to 0, and you solve for x. OK. Next theorem, I think it's our last one before we start getting into the work. Uh, this is about local extrema and critical numbers. So again, what we're going to do is find the critical numbers, plot them on a sign chart. We're going to create intervals. We're going to pick test numbers in the intervals. And these test numbers will tell us where our function increases and decreases. So with the help of the sign chart, it'll help us find local extrema. It'll help us find maximums and minimums, which is called the first derivative test for local extrema. So number one, this says f of c, so our original function at a critical number is a local minimum if the derivative changes from negative to positive at the critical number, this means that f of c is a local minimum. So this means when you plot your sign chart, if we decrease and then increase, this means that the, the value of c, that critical number, will be a local minimum. So if you decrease and increase, you have a local min. Two. If your function increases and decreases, 
this means that that critical number of C is going to be a local maximum. And then three, if your function increases and increases, then there is no change in sign. There is no change in direction. This means that there is no local max or min. There is no extrema. So if you go increase, increase, there's no max or min, which is going to be the same for number four. If your graph decreases, decreases, no change in sign. This means, again, there is no local max or min. OK. Ooh, that's all the definition. So now let's put it to work. All right, number one, find intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing and the local extrema. So we want to find intervals of increase and decrease, and we want to find max and mins. OK, so step A. We're going to find the intervals that the function is increasing on and decreasing on. And in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is find critical numbers. So I re I've listed the instructions there as well. I said step A, part A, find the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. After we do that, we're going to take those critical numbers, put them on a number line, and test it. Okay. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. All right, we'll call this step A. So we're going to first take the derivative of the function above. And that derivative is going to be 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Then we're going to set the derivative equal to 0. So this means we're going to take 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 and set it equal to 0. And what we're going to do from here is solve for x. OK. Well, what I'm going to do first is I notice that I can divide everything by 3. This will give me x squared minus 4x plus 3 equal to 0. OK, and now in order to solve for x, this is a quadratic equation, which means we are going to factor it. So this will factor to x minus 1, x minus 3 equal to 0. Maybe I wrote too big. Let's see. And go a little bigger right there. Okay. Okay. So it's factored, which means now you can solve for x. You set x minus 1 and x minus 3 equal to 0, and you'll get x equals 1 and x equals 3. These numbers are called my critical or partition numbers. OK, which means that the next step is going to be creating a number line. So we want to know where do we increase, where do we decrease? All right, so let me create this number line. Probably have to move it down. One second. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to plot the critical numbers I just found, which are one and three. So here's going to go one. And here I'll put three. Okay. Now we are going to choose test numbers. Well, first, sorry, we'll create intervals. So for this sign chart, 
This tail goes to negative infinity. This tail goes to infinity. So the first thing I'm going to have are intervals. I have negative infinity to 1, 1 to 3, and 3 to infinity. So these intervals represent the spaces on my sign chart that have been broken up. OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick test numbers. And we're going to pick test numbers in between each interval. So from negative infinity to 1, my first test number will be 0. Then from 1 to 3, I'm going to pick 2. And then from 3 to infinity, I'm going to pick 4. So the numbers I have chosen, the test numbers I have picked, are in between each of these intervals. Yeah. So now this is going to be a sign chart for the first derivative. So we take all of these values and plug them into the first derivative. Plug into f prime of x. So here you'll have f prime of 0, f prime of 2, and f prime of 4. OK. And I guess Desmos time. Let me see. Make our work a little easier. Data. There we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is type in the first derivative 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. And then I'm going to do the table feature. And I'm going to type in my test numbers, which I have right over here. OK. <clears throat> so we're plugging in 0. Oh, it's there already. We're plugging in 2. And we're plugging in 4. There we go. 0, 2, 4. So when I plug in 0, I get 9. When I plug in 2, I get negative 3. And when I plug in 4, I get 9. OK. So what we're looking at uh, with these outputs is whether the number is positive or negative. That's how you keep it simple. So we could actually care less about the numerical output. We only want to care about the sign. So when x is 0, the output is a positive 9. This means that if you have a positive number, remember we're thinking in terms of slope here. If you have a positive number, this means the slope is increasing from the interval negative infinity to 1. OK. And then when we pick the test number of 2, which is between the interval 1 and 3, we got a negative output of negative 3. So this means that no matter what number you pick between 1 and 3, the answer will always be negative, which means the derivative is decreasing. And then from 3 to infinity, we pick the test number of 4. And since the output was a positive 9, this means that the derivative, the slope, would be increasing. OK. Which means that we can now answer the questions it was asking. What intervals, based on our sign chart, are we increasing on and we are decreasing on?
So based on this sign chart, we can say that we're increasing on the intervals negative infinity to one, comma, three to infinity. And then we decrease on the interval one to three. All right. And that's all the work we have to do for those ones. OK. All right, well, on to B. Does this function have a local maximum or minimum? And if so, what are their values? That means we just look at the sign chart above. So for B, we want to know if we have a max or min. Well, look at this. Oh, it's a good color. I'll just do blue. OK, so look at our increasing and decreasing on the sign chart. So at the critical number of one, we see that we increase and decrease. So at that critical number of one, we increase and decrease. Since we increase and decrease at one, this means that one will be a local maximum. So I'll put that in here. X equals one is a local max. And then let's look at the next critical number of three. At three, we decrease and increase. We decrease and increase. This means that three will be a local minimum. OK, so that's how you find your max and mins. You use that sign chart above. OK, but now it wants to know what is their value. So what we're going to do is take these x values and plug them into the original function. So that's what we're going to have to do here. So be careful with this. We have to plug into the original function. Plug into f of x. Same thing here. Plug into f of x. OK. So this means that my original function's up there. You'll have f of 1 and f of 3. And of course, Desmos helped me out for the win. Type a new function down here. Because we're not plugging them into the derivative, we're plugging them into the original function. So I'm going to type that in x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 1. And then do I get that table button? No, no, I don't see it. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, there we go. And I'm typing in one and I'm typing in three. There we go. So here I get five and one. Okay. So this means that a local max will happen at the point one five and a local min will happen at the point three one which means let's go ahead and move on to sketching this graph. So all we're going to do here, again, to make our life simple, we're going to use Desmos. And we're graphing the original function. So I'm going to keep this up here, right here. OK, so the only points we need to plot are the ones we found, the local max and the local min. And we're going to go ahead and follow the route of increase and decrease from the sign chart. So if I plug these values in or plot these values, 1, 5, let me see. 1, 5 
go a little bigger there. One five inch is going to be right there. And then my other value is three one. So one, two, three, three, one. Okay, and this is the local max at one five. And that's the local min at three one. Okay, and now, like I said, to graph the rest of this, all you have to do is follow your sign chart from the, from the above. So when I graph this, like that, I know that from negative infinity to one, we increase. So this is what increasing would look like. If I did that right, increase, there we go. So that's increasing. And then I know from one to three, we decrease. So I would curve down, there's decrease. And then from three to infinity, I again increase. And ours is just a sketch. It doesn't have to look perfect like the one on the left, but I'm just showing you how to graph these by the sign chart and the local max and minimums that we found. Okay. Now the last part of this says plot any horizontal tangent lines. We'll remember that by the theorem of critical numbers, horizontal tangent lines appear at the points of the critical number. So basically, the horizontal tangent lines appear at our local maxes and mins. So all you have to do is just draw a little horizontal tangent line, and it's done. There we go. And that is how you use the first derivative to sketch a function. So any questions on that process? Is anybody still alive out there? I'm still here. I yeah, did. Okay. All right. Hanging in there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're going to do the same exact thing for the next problem. Okay. Two. Again, locate the local extrema and find where we are increasing and decreasing on. So that means that for this one, for A, we're going to start by finding the derivative. So we're going to say f prime of x. This gives me negative 4x cubed plus 100x. So that's our derivative. And then after you find the derivative, you set it equal to 0. So we get negative 4x cubed plus 100x equal to 0. And then from here, we can factor. I see I have a negative 4x cubed and a 100x. So I see that I can take out a negative 4x. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4x. When I factor out that negative 4x, this will leave me with positive x squared minus 25 equal to 0. All right. And then I'll factor one more time because x squared minus 25 is a difference of squares. So this will factor to x plus 5, x minus 5 equal to 0. And now, just set all three terms equal to zero and solve for x. So negative 4x equals zero, x plus 5 equals zero, 
x minus five equals zero. And here you'll get x equals zero, x equals negative five, and x equals five. All three of these are my critical numbers or partition numbers. Okay, which means that once you find your critical numbers, you go ahead and plot them on the number line. So that's our next step. There's negative infinity, there's positive infinity, and I'm gonna plot my critical numbers. There's negative five, zero, and five. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, that's probably good right there. And of course, we are now going to make our intervals. Oops. First interval is negative infinity to negative five. Second one is negative five to zero. Next is zero to five. And last is five to infinity. There's our four intervals that break up that number line. Okay. Next is test numbers. So we're picking test numbers again in between each of these intervals. So for the first one, negative infinity to negative five, I'm gonna pick negative six. And then from negative five to zero, I'm gonna pick negative one. And then from zero to five, I'm gonna pick one. And then from five to infinity, I'm going to pick six. Okay. So remember, this is a sign chart for the first derivative. So you plug all of these into the first derivative. So you'll have f prime of negative six, f prime of negative one, f prime of one, and f prime of six. And Desmos to help us out. All right, I'm gonna type in that first derivative negative four x cubed plus 100 x, do my little table and type in these test numbers. Here we go. All right, so negative six, negative one, one and six. All right, and like I said, you really don't have to worry about the number, just worry about the sign of the output. So for negative six, you get a positive 264. So I'll just say positive, and then negative one, you get negative, and then one, you get a positive output, and then six, you get a negative output. So we really don't care about the number, we just care about the, care about the sign, because that's what we're gonna use to plot on our sign chart up here. So what we're saying is that from any number we choose from negative infinity to negative five, the answer is always going to be positive. This means that the derivative is increasing or positive. The derivative is positive, which means the original function is increasing. Okay. And then if you choose a number from negative five to zero, the answer is always going to be negative, which means we are now decreasing. And then zero to five, increase, 
5 to infinity decrease. Okay. Which means we can answer what question A is asking. Once you have that sign chart completed, we can answer from the sign chart where we are increasing at and decreasing at. So looking at this sign chart, I'll scroll up a bit, there we go. We increase on the intervals, negative infinity to negative five and zero to five. We decrease on the intervals negative five to zero and five to infinity. There we go. Just like the last one. Okay, so we do all of that work just to get these intervals of increase and decrease. So you get the first derivative, solve for x, set it equal to zero, solve for x, plot those on a number line, and then pick test numbers. Okay. B, it wants to know if we have local maximums or minimums. So we're going to use that sign chart to answer these questions. Let's look at the first critical number. So we see that at x equals negative 5, we increase and decrease. So at negative five, we increase and decrease. This means that x equals negative five is a local max. And then you look at the next critical number of zero. You decrease and you increase at zero. You decrease and you increase at zero, which means that zero is a local minimum. And then the very last one, five, you increase and you decrease. This means that five is a local max. But now we want the exact location of these local maxes and minimums. So now remember that you plug these in to the original function. So we're plugging in for f of x. So I'll say f of negative 5, f of 0, and f of 5. Plug into the original function. Okay, where Desmos again. Where's the original function right there? Okay, I'll type that one in. Negative x to the fourth plus 50x squared. All right, and then make my little table there and type in these exact numbers, negative five, zero, five. Okay. So this means that at negative five, we get negative 500. At zero, we get zero. And five, we get negative 500. Well, we said local max. Did I miss up a sign? Let me see. Oh, I did. That was a five. I didn't mess up a sign. I didn't put a zero there. There we go. That makes more sense. I was like, they can't be local maxes if they're that negative. Okay. So not negative 500. This is 625. 
Okay, perfect. Which means that we now know the location of our local mins and maximums. So we can go ahead and plot that on a graph. Ooh, man, that's tall. Hang on. I can change this. I can say make this 630. There we go. Okay. And now we know what the graph looks like. We see it on the left, but again, we're going to plot the points that we found and use the sign chart to help us graph ours. So if negative five and 625, let's just say that this is in the hundreds, right? So this is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. And when I plot my first one at negative five and 625, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to put a point right there. And then the next point is at zero, zero. And then the last point is at five and 625. One, two, three, four, five, and right there. Okay. And now, like I said, we can graph this by using our sign chart. We know that from negative infinity to negative five, the function's increasing. So that means we would come up like this. And then from negative five to zero, we are decreasing. And then from zero to five, we increase again. And from five to infinity, we decrease. And there's our sketch. Almost like the one on the left. Okay, definitely a lot of work, but you have your calculators and Desmos to help you out with the calculations, of course. But any questions on that one? You got 625, zero and 625 from putting the uh, critical numbers or the local max and min into the original function. Exactly. Okay. I'll put that as a note right there. I didn't note it on this one, but I can say that. Plug into f of x, the original, not f prime of x, f of x. Cool. All right. All right. Okay, last one. So for this one, they are giving us a sign chart and the critical numbers already, and they're giving us points to plot. This is a horizontal XY chart. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and plot the points that it's giving us, and then we're going to graph it by following the sign chart. So the first point they give us is negative two, negative one. So it's negative two, negative one. That's going to go right there. The second point they give us is negative one, one. Negative one, one goes right here. The third point they give us is zero, two. Zero, two, right there. Fourth point, one, three. One, one, two, three, right there. And then last point, two, one, one, two, and one. Okay. And now all we have to do is graph this by using the sign chart. So what this sign chart says, here I'll put negative infinity there and infinity there. What this sign chart says is that from negative infinity to negative one, we are increasing. 
So that would look like this. We are increasing from negative infinity to negative one. And then it says from negative one to one, we're increasing again. So this means that this is increasing again. And then from one to infinity, we are now decreasing. So we just curve down that way. And there it is. Probably not as ugly, but it's just a sketch. And there we go. That one's not bad. That was easier than the rest of them. Okay. And that is 11.1.